streets across the park here. I don't care where you met him. You're not to see him again, understood? Fine. Look at this. The bomb on the bridge, apparently. No. Suspicions were raised when a hijacked man... Oh, dear God, no. Does this mean they can't get to school? I've had a whole summer of it, Jerry. She's melting my head. Should their bus can go the long way around? I'll get it. Major traffic disruptions right, are Sarah. anticipated. Then Wayne shouldn't have to take the bus to school. You should be driving them. You useless shit. I have to work, Joe. Work? <laughs> Is that what you call it? Yes. Why don't you just leave my Mary alone? Because we've been married for 17 years, Joe. We have two children. And because we're in love with each other. Oh, book. I find some dirt in you yet, boy. I've got people working on it. Aaron, what in God's name? Did you kill that wee nun, girls? Of course we didn't. Then why were you pissing on her dead body and making sandwiches? Say nothing, girls. Say nothing till we've seen a lawyer. If you could all just take a seat. Sorry I'm late, sister. Couldn't get over the bridge, this bloody bomb. I begged the Brits to let me take my chances, but the awkward bastards made me go the long way. How's the safety gone mad, dear? Obviously, Sister Declan's death was extremely shocking and unexpected. We're still struggling to understand exactly what happened. Yeah. Can I just ask, what age was Sister Declan? She'd have been 98 on Friday. Right. Might that shed some light on the situation? How so? Does anybody else have any thoughts on the whole her being almost 98 years of age thing? Struck down in her prime. No, more bacon than anyone. Not a sausage. We omelette, maybe. Anything at all? It's absolutely no bother. I'll have a cup of tea, so, Joe. Make your own tea. Yeah, we'll do that. You stay over too, son? Yes, I did. That's correct, sir. What? In your room? Have you nothing to say about this, you slack southern shite? Look, love, I know the fella's gay. I'm not gay. But gay or not? You, you said I was gay. He's still a fella. There's still a good chance that he's a rapist. I mean, no offence, son. Well, that's that done. God rest his wee soul. Oh, don't talk to me. I was in bits last night. Didn't even manage my Chinese. Poor Tonto. Toto? His name is Toto, aren't Sarah? Aye, nightmare, so it is. Dad, who is a bacon buddy, would you? My stomach thinks my throat's cut here. Surely, love. Jesus, the pets are getting it left, right and centre at the minute. Moin Malarkey's Tigger just passed away. We do not utter that woman's name in this house. Look, Dan, at the bingo thing still. She's a juvenile bitch. How can you cheat a bingo, Brenda? Her nephew brought her this pen back from New Jersey. It changes the numbers. I'm telling you. It's witchcraft, Mary. Well, hear no more about the magic pen. Dad, for God's sake, we'll turn that down. I have turned it down. That's zero. We'll have an opportunity then. I don't know how he does it. Okay, that's one portion of redfish, one portion of whitefish, two bags of chips. No, no, no. Two bags won't be enough. Two's plenty, Joe. Four. Four should cover us. Three, then. We'll compromise. I'll compromise you through that window. That's enough, dear. The tight bastard's trying to starve us all, Mary. Okay. Four bags of chips, then. Would four bags be enough? More than enough. I say we'd need five to be safe. Do you not think that? Stick down, Faith. <sighs> five bags of chips, then. I'll have a chicken fillet burger. No lettuce, no tomato, no cheese. I'll just write plain, will I? No onions, no cucumber. One plain. No relish, no pickles, no mayonnaise. No chicken. What do you mean, no chicken? Get that. <sighs> it's a chicken burger. Of course I want chicken. What are you? A simpleton? Oh. No chicken. It's Uncle Colin. Hey, you take it, Dad? No chance, love. I mean, I know I shouldn't say this about my own brother, but by Christ, he's a boring bastard. Well, is somebody going to take it or not? Oh, oh my you... God. What's wrong? Our column's in the police station. Last night, two gunmen forced their way into his house, tied him up, stole his van. Dirty bastards. <gasps> did you just wink? No. You did? You just winked. Sure, winking's not a main notion, Mary. What would I have to be winking about? I don't know. I'll find out. This is the word of the Lord. You don't know a, a Jack McGinley, do you? Moved to Moscow, 88, 89, it would have been. Seriously? No. Stocky fella? No. Curly hair, bit of a lisp. I do not know this person. Ah, maybe just as well, love. He's an awful prick. Have you any news, Dad? Not really, no. Right. 
She Harkin was telling me you were in Duggan's bakery yesterday lunchtime. Well, that's hardly news. <laughs> Two buns, he says, she ordered. Oh, well, I often do. An apple turnover and a cream horn. A cream horn? That's not like you, Grandma. Sure you couldn't pay you to eat a cream horn. Cream finger it was. Apple turnover and a cream finger. Cream horn, Shay said. Horns, fingers, who cares? He swore on it, said he saw it being bagged up. And big Shay has eyes like a hawk, so he does. Shay said when you left Huggins, you turned up Pump Street. Pump Street? Who do you know on Pump Street, Dad? What were you doing heading up Pump Street with a cream horn, Dad? I was visiting a friend of mine. What friend? A new friend. A male friend, was it? Aye, I, I thought as much. Buying cream horns for his fancy woman, Sarah, what do you think of that? We met at the Stations of the Cross. Which station? Jesus falls for the second time. I could do without the details, Dad. Maeve and me, we're... We're just getting on well, that's all. Maeve? That's her name, is it? Yes, that's right. Maeve? That's what she's called, is she? She is, aye. Maeve? Maeve? Really? Maeve? Why does your mother make that sound? I cannot believe this. I think it's a good thing, love. Oh, just keep out of it, you. And that's who you were winking at in mass? Winking? Mm -hmm. At your age? Christ, I feel sick. It was only a friendly wink. There is no such thing as a friendly wink. Is there not? Our poor mother is barely cold. And you're straight back out there, winking away. Your mother's been dead ten years, Mary. Look, I'll not tell you again. I'm sorry. I seem to have lost my appetite. You happy now? Young and hard. How could he bring another woman into this house? How could he bring her here? And our mother's home? Your mother never lived in this house. Shut up, Terry. Right. Come on in there, babe. Ah, oh, yeah. These are my daughters. That's Mary. And this is Sarah. Hello, Maeve. Maeve. I'm Mary's husband, Jerry. <laughs> we're Mary and Jerry, and we're living in Derry. <laughs> uh, get the tea going. Right, I, I'll just grab my beads. Be back in a minute. Just make yourself comfortable. They're just yeah. not ready, Joe. Maybe see you in mass then, eh? Aye. Here, give me a hand. Tell Sarah, this is the fella that blow dries my hair. He's an artist. Take care. That Maeve away. Aye. Nice woman. Aye. Mary and Sarah will come round eventually, Joe. It's just hard for them to see you with somebody else, you know? As far as they're concerned, their mother was perfect. Piss off, Jerry. Just a rehearsal, love. They've been playing the same three songs since 1795. What do they need to rehearse for? Well, Give us a hand here, Jerry. This will not close. We need to shift ourselves. We're the last Fenians standing. Relax, love. We've a good two or three hours before the rioting starts. I'll not settle myself until we're over that border, Dad. You're absolutely sure we need the big clock, love? We've been through this, Jerry. Definitely don't want to bring the wee clock. I can't be doing with the wee clock. What exactly is your problem with a big clock? I wouldn't say I have a problem as such. It's just much heavier and takes up a lot of room. I'm telling you, Mary, that's how it starts. Now he's dictating what size of clock you can pack. Next he'll be telling you what to wear, what to say. Before you know it, you'll be faking your own death and assuming a new identity. Aaron, I told you not to let him watch that sleeping with the enemy. Couldn't stop him, Mommy. Great show. Stick that in the boot. <clears throat> Ah, you'd be as well getting one of the wheels to do it. Out of the way. It'll be grand. Us men can camp outside. Oh, God. Oh, God. Run and ask Jim across the road for the length of his tent. Ah, oh, thanks a million, Mary. I owe you one. Here, if you want our rent to sort that gable wall of yours out, you have only to ask. What's wrong with our gable wall? Christ's sake. Do you think it's an omen? 
What are they, stilts? Golf clubs. I thought... Uh, spatulas? They're rifles. Really? Are you sure? Fairly sure. I also don't understand what connection spatulas, golf clubs or stilts would have to the Irish resistance. Christ, he's a dose. Night. Gave you the intrepid, did he? That's his second best tent, you know. Tell you what, son. I'm putting you in charge of it, OK? Oh, please don't. Please don't put me in charge of it. You'll be all right. Right, there's too many of us for one car. Some of you'll have to go with me, Dad. Oh, can I? Can I? Because Joe drives really fast. He, like, runs through red lights and takes corners in two wheels. As class. It really is. I think I'll hop in with Mr Quinn, if that's OK. M me too. I'll go with me, Dad. He lets me smoke. Yes. All right, Joe, if you just follow me. Well, why should I follow you? I've got the map. Ah. Well, now I have the map. Ah, da. Joe, it's, it's all just a bit trickier today. There are so many roadblocks up, there are so many diversions, and, you know, I drive for a living. He says this, I have something to be proud of. Look, we just need to get out of this place as quickly and as quietly as possible. You know what age I am, boy? You know how many of these parades I've lived through? You think I don't realise how quickly a situation can turn? You think I'd do anything to put my family at risk? No, of course not. I'm sorry. Hmm. What are you looking at, you tangerine too? OK, Grandpa. I think what's happened here is now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your father has just driven through a police barricade. Well, it's done now. Oh, that's true. It's probably not even that big a deal if you ignore the fact that orange men are circling us as though we're their fucking prey. That'll be grand. You'll not tell me where I can and can't go in my own town. Orange bastards. Oh, look, that cop's pointing his gun at us. I mean, it's not ideal, but this is more of a pickle. It's a pickle, isn't it, Brenda? It's just a pickle. Arms hold! OK, then. Sorry, shakes! What the hell were you playing at back there, Kimosabe? That's actually a Native American term. Oh, what were you meant to be? Japanese. I hope that you get much Japanese tourism in Derry, do you? I could... Was there something else, or...? Yes. Yes, there was something else, actually. Look, I'm sure you have questions. I just don't really want to get into it all. Yeah, well, we didn't really want you to get into our boot, but... Maybe just leave the fellow be sure. What's the odds? And what if they pull us over at the checkpoint, Joe? What if the army asks to search the car? The Brits are flat out with on parade. They'll not bother with the legs of us. That's a good point. Stay out of it, you. Right. In you go, son. Ah, da. What do you want me to do? Turn the way in out in the middle of nowhere? But this is dangerous, Joe. He is dangerous. Uh, I'm not dangerous. In fairness, Emmett, if you were dangerous, you wouldn't say that you were dangerous, would you? True. Come on, Emmett, out ah, you go. Ah, ah. You just stay where you are, son. I'm not comfortable driving him across the border. Fine. I'll drive him. It's aiding and abetting. We're talking serious jail time here. Well, it's a risk we have to take. No, it's not, Joe. It's not a risk we have to take. It's a risk we shouldn't take. Well, you take that tome with me, boy. Uh, don't blame me. Just grabbing a knife. Take it you haven't decided yet? Just leave it with me, son. I no pressure. Shall I be over here if you need me? You really think this will work? That they'll tell us what to do? Sure it's worth a try. Would you look at that? Well, what did they say? I think now, I can't be certain, but I think they're saying you should leave, Jerry. Well, I could have told you that years ago when I'm not sick. Didn't want to put you in this position, but I can't stress the seriousness of my situation. Anything else? Oh, do you know what? I wouldn't mind a knickerbocker glory. Right. You need to help me out here. We do that and we're breaking the law. Well, you recognise the legal system of a brutal imperialistic oppressor, do you? Uh, if they can put me in jail for 20 years, then yes, Emmett. Yes, I do. Listen, listen. Have you killed anyone, son? No. Well, at least not directly. Well, there you go. So that settles it. I don't think that does settle it, actually, Joe. You know what's wrong with you, Jerry? You're an awful wuss. I'm not a wuss. You're afraid of your own shadow. I'm not. 
Well, then grow a set of balls and help a fell out. I have a set of balls, thank you very much. Oh, seriously, Daddy. You're even afraid of that weaker. What weaker? That waitress. You wanted a, a cup of tea, she brought you a Coke, and you just sat there and said, sweet Fanny Adams. Your granddad said Fanny. Well, that's because I like Coke. Her customer service is shocking as well. I desperate. Well, someone should say something. Yeah, Jerry! Jerry should say something! Who will? No problem. I'll say something. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. What? Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I, um, I ordered uh, tea, you brought me a Coke, and that's not acceptable. But you drank the Coke. That's not the point. And your service has been nothing short of appalling. Your attitude is worse. It's simply not good enough. I'll, uh, I'll bring you a tea. You do that. I'm sorry. I got a bit of bad news today. Oh. I haven't really been able to focus. I've been a bit distracted, maybe. I'm sorry. I'll just clear No, 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 no. Ignore all that. I'll bring you your tea right away. Sorry. Well, there was absolutely no need for that. Can I just do it again with real money? This is real money, Sarah. You know what I mean? Normal money? All right. Who has ten pence? It was him. The mural on our house. The spray paint. It was Emmett. I can prove it. Sly wee bastard. You bloody tight. Where is Emmett? There he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I told you to look after that tent. No, you didn't. You told him to look after it. Ah, blame the wheel. Big man. Jesus. Jim's second past tent. How am I going to break it to him? Oh, listen, Dad. Do not be starting me about darks, Mary. I've given you whatever darks I have. Stick on a half load me down with a woman. A half load goes against everything I stand for. You know that, Dad. You ready to do the big shop, Dad? Aye. Jerry! Jerry! I don't see why that useless drip you call a husband has to get common. Because someone needs to drive and you've been suspended again. What did you do this time, Daddy? Nothing. So you see discrimination. The only crime I committed was to be born a Catholic. Jerry's never been suspended and he's a Catholic. He's also a prick, but that's by the bay. Cut that out, Dad. Found some. <gasps> Found some, Mary. Great. Right. That's us away. Have a nice time. Tell that free state fucker to shift his hole. I'm sure we will. Now you got me, ain't you, boy? Jesus, Joe. What are you doing here? Being your fancy woman, I suppose. No, I'm not. I'm collecting Mary's photographs. And if I was having an illicit rendezvous with my mistress, I'm not sure that the supermarket that my father-in-law is doing the big shop in would be the best place for it, really. Quinn, you said? That's right. Here we go. Great. That'll be £3.75, please. And have you got your wee docket there? Yeah, I do, yeah. It's a wee red slip of paper, about J big. Yeah. Dark blue letter in it has. Yeah, I, I know. Not a navy blue now, more like a royal blue. I know what it looks like. Times New Roman, I believe the font is called. I just can't find it. Prick. Uh, look, uh, I'm sorry. Um, do you absolutely need it? I'm afraid I do, sir, yes. Proof of ID. But you have my surname written on it there. How do I know that's your surname? Because I just told you it was my surname. You could be lying. Well, why would I lie? To get your hands on someone else's photos. And why would I want somebody else's photos? Like, who would pay for somebody else's photos? Oh, a stalker, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Very good, sir. A stalker. I'm not a stalker. Look, why don't you just go home and have a wee look for your wee docket? No, this is ridiculous. Just open that up and take out one of the photos. <sighs> you see? 
That's me wife there. How do I know you're not just telling me that? Because that's me standing beside her. I suppose you do look a bit like this man. I am this man. It could be you. It's definitely me. Look, my name is Jerry Quinn. This is my father-in-law, Joe. He can vouch for me. I've never seen this man before in my life. No docket, no photographs. How did you have lost the wee docket, Jerry? Hi, everybody knows you've to hang on to the wee docket. Look, I've said that I'm sorry. They were my birthday photos, for God's sake. There's definitely grounds for an annulment here, Mary. I mean, you only turned 33 once. I've been 33 a few times now, in fairness, Mary. Well, aren't you a brave man, given the circumstances? Mary, come on. Would you not reconsider? No, dear. Please, love. Just at once. I'm not letting you hit him, dear. I'm devastated. That was when I lost the half stone doing the Rosemary Conley as well. My collarbone was sort of poking through my skin. Do you remember, Mary? Ah, uh, you were far too thin, sir. No, it was. It was brilliant. And now I haven't got so much as a photograph to look back on. Look, it's gone. The docket's gone. Why don't we just move on? Why don't you just move out? I think I know what happened to the wee docket. See, I was so focused on pissing off that gobshite my eldest girl is unfortunate enough to be married to that I completely lost sight of the fact that they were really her birthday photos. And my other girl, my younger girl, well, she was looking very slim at the time, so uh, go and grab them for me. There's a good fellow. I can't accept that. I think something's been lost in translation here, boy. Here, Daddy, get away for that. Well, that's really nice, love. It's you. The photographs. Well, I remember you. Oh, I couldn't forget you. Hope you don't mind me saying this. But you have a cracking clavicle. I don't mind, Kieran. I don't mind at all. Oh, for Christ's sake. You should get that one framed as a wee reminder of your nightmare. I'm not in that one. I know, but it's stunning to me. It is indeed. Hey, boy. What's dinner she invited you round for? Not an orgy. She basically told us we can't prank the story because it's about a lesbian. Do you not think there's an awful lot of lesbians about nowadays? You can't move for lesbians. It's what they all lesbians out there. Really? Oh, well, it's true. Bridget Gallagher, she's a lesbian. Bridget Gallagher, who works in the post office? I believe so. Is she not a vegetarian, Dan? Sorry, you're right. Vegetarian, Bridget is. Well, it's an easy mistake to make, Joe. Can I call you Joe? No. Right? Welcome to the club, Kieran. I'm going to have to make a stand about this, Mummy. I know you won't, Erin. The school is trying to erase this young girl's experience. All because she's gay. I mean... Right, sick. Is this bastard living with us now? Daddy's dead funny, isn't he? Yeah. Lenny, your kite be going, love. My kite? Or can you not get Protestant lesbians? No, I think you can get them, all right? It's just... I heard that Katie Lang on the radio yesterday. Trace, but she's got some set of pipes on her. You're very talented people. Thank you. Because of government restrictions, we cannot broadcast the voice of Mr. Adams. His words are spoken by an actor. Well, with respect, and I mean, if you're watching... I will never understand the point of that. I'll never understand the point of you. Grants all. Both agreed about the need to see an end to all acts of violence. I want to see that. It's because his natural voice is actually very seductive. Apparently, he sounds like a West Belfast Bond. As far as English are concerned, a voice like that, well, it's dangerous. Just so I'm clear, are you saying that the British government dub the voice of Jerry Adams because it's too sexy? It's like a fine whiskey. And I have that in good authority, boy. OK. Oh, my mum, I said to tell you. Her big bowl. I know, I know, I keep forgetting. I'll drop it round today. No, she said to hang on to it. What? She doesn't want her big bowl back. But why? There's nothing wrong with that bowl. She was admiring that bowl only yesterday. It's a grand bowl. Yes. No funny business with these Protestant lads. Is that clear? I don't want anybody landing back here pregnant. Not very likely in my case. I wouldn't rule it out, son. Teenage boys can be very convincing, Erin. I remember your father at that. End that sentence, now. Yes. Please do. Creep. I just cannot get my head around it. 
For the love of God, Mary, it's only a bowl. Who just gives away their big bowl, Jerry? It doesn't make sense. Uh, she's definitely up to something, love. I have always said that Deirdre Mallon is a bit fly. I can front her about it. No, I intend to. Great, do that. Then maybe we can lay the whole bloody thing to rest. Take that toe of her again, I'll lay you to rest, boy. about Geraldine. As far as I can make out, these lads try to throw my Claire off a cliff. Desperate. You're right, Mary. How's the bowl working out for you? Great. Great. Thanks very much, Deidre. Well, that got to the bottom of it, all right. Is that everyone? What girls? It's all your foot, you know. Hey, you just so happy. See that child over there? That child's regular. I wonder what's keeping Daddy. Excuse me? I've got the tickets. We haven't decided what we want to see yet, Dad. Uh. Well, I like the look of that one with all the lads in the lineup. It's got your man in it, the farmer from Glen Row. What, Gabriel Byrne? He's done a fair bit since Glen Row and Elle. Well, who are you? His agent? Dad, I don't understand this. You hate the cinema. Oh, not since I discovered it's the only way I can spend time with our column. It's the one place the boring bastard doesn't talk. But Colm's not here, is he, Dad? Da? Dad? And that's not to say now that in my younger years I didn't enjoy a uh, boiled sweet. Well, isn't this romantic? The old fella's nothing but a flight bastard. Don't you be trusting him? I just want to check. Does your father think that they can hear him? Shh. Apologies, folks. We've just had a wee security alert there. I'm afraid we're going to have to carry out a wee evacuation. So if you'll all follow me. Lovely. Great stuff. That's the last time I'll let you organise a night out. OK, then. I'm going to need on Alec Baldwin's brother. Gabriel Burns, I'm telling you. The fellow with a bad leg said it wasn't me. The fellow with a bad leg covering for him, Dad. Sweet. Jesus. Well, maybe can I get one? Not the Christmas cupboard. They've had the very tonics, Mary. Animals, a lot of you. We needed energy for our poetry. I give you energy for your poetry. We were just going to take a handful of chocolate money, Mary, but then one thing led to another. What am I supposed to do? I'll have to start from scratch now. And December's only round the corner. It's eight months away, love. Now, well, this suits you, doesn't it? Sorry? I've seen you end up that Christmas cupboard. You hooked about in there long before the Wayans did. I'd stake my life on it. That is simply not true. I'm leaning Let's toward Pete Postlethwaite now. It wasn't Pete Postlethwaite, Dad. It's never Pete Postlethwaite. Look, this is driving me to distraction. We'll have to go back tonight. It's not in the listings anymore, love. What? The cinema stopped showing it. Oh, well done. It's not my fault. Ah, sure, nothing ever is. Oh, what are we... Go on, matey. I don't know what the world is coming to. Bloody perverts. You're overreacting, Dad. Overreacting? That lad's got no treasures on, for Christ's sake. Belfast? Are we not about early, Daddy? It's a two-hour drive for traffic. Of this thing's in Belfast. But it's eight hours till the doors open. I know. We're cutting it fine. Belfast? Sure, why did you just sell away and send a white slavery and be done with it? Jerry, I'll be with them, Dad. Well, that's worse. So they hid his kind there. My kind? Pricks. That is enough. They're going to the concert, Dad. And that's the end of the matter. I finally panic at Belfast Zoo today when a polar bear escaped from its enclosure. The RUC have launched a widespread search and have warned residents in the local area to be extra... Now, will you see, Sam? As if, Molly, as if a polar bear's going to rock up at a techno concert. You wouldn't get a ticket for a start. They sold out months ago. You'd be surprised, guys. Aye, lone boys would get in where drafts wouldn't. I'm sure, the concert's nowhere near the zoo. But he's not in the zoo anymore, is he, Simple Simon? He's sauntering about Belfast without a care in the world. I keep up, Jack. Girls, I know how much you were looking forward to seeing this and that. Take that. But there'll be other concerts. No, there won't. The fact that this one's happening is a miracle. Nobody good ever comes here because we keep killing each other. And now we're over only polar bears. Where will it end? Seriously? Um, in and ground. What? A polar bear. Margot Murphy's niece saw him just outside the Abracababra in cold rain, apparently. That close? I get the holy water. Sarah, buzz Michelle's mother there. Tell her we need our wains back. I will, surely, Daddy. Then we'll barricade the front door. And if the worst comes to the worst, Jim across the road let me his tranquilizer go. Nobody's picking up, Mary. Why does Jim... Jesus Christ! OK, I think we all just need to take a moment. Don't answer! That might be him! That might be the polar bear! <laughs>
Yeah, because they're known for their impeccable manners. They might come into your house and rip your throat out, but they'll knock on the door first. Could you please stop pointing that thing at me, Joe? Da. Look, Geraldine. I hope you don't mind. Your front door was open. Can you believe this bloody polar bear? Mm. Well, our wits end over at our place. It's desperate, so it is. Oh, Mary, Jerry. Shh. Come on in. Listen. A polar bear that escaped from Belfast Zoo this morning has been recaptured. A group of firefighters who were helping with the search discovered the animal close to the A6 between Belfast and London Derry feasting on a sheep carcass. Oh, thank God for that. Huh. Better leave Jem's gun back, so. Michelle? Everyone is looking at us. Do you think it's your hat? What? It is a bit much, Mary. I did try to tell you. My hat's a bit much, really. You should be ashamed of yourself. What in under Christ have you done now? I don't think she was talking to me, Joe. I think she was talking to the person in the full-length white frock who just managed to upstage the actual bride. Fuck, I wouldn't say upstaged or not, Jerry. Oh, shit. There you are. You spade us. Run, girl. Save yourselves. Fair enough. Ourselves over there, circling the drinks table. Bitter old bat. Da. It's one glass per head. She has already necked the guts of four bottles. Da. Though it'll hardly touch the sides. Tolerance of a rhino. Stop it, okay? Freddy's still our aunt. Still Mammy's sister. And if Mammy was alive... Your mother couldn't stick her. She's coming over. All right, Brady. You well? Nope. No, I'm not actually. Not that you give a shit. Uh, Mammy hasn't been keeping the best lately, Joe. I was a bit worried about her for a while. I wouldn't have said yourself too much, son. Sure a bullet couldn't take your mother out. Isn't that right, Brady? Still a prick, I see, Joe. Christ knows what Armory ever saw in you. God rest her soul. Our love is like the ship on the ocean. The truth. Large as life. Oh, God. What is it? He's got someone. Armed they were. Should we save the poor fella? No chance. Oh, Daddy, he's only young. I don't care. When it comes to our column, it's every man for himself. Well, that certainly explains a few things. What's that supposed to mean? It means that a bit of discipline would do those girls no harm. They have been running about all day like a couple of wild animals. OK, that will do, Brian. Then the apple never did fall far from the tree. Mammy, please. You girls never did know how to conduct yourselves. Nothing but a pair of hellions. Come on now, Brady, that's enough of that. Well, there's no need you to defend them, you big pair of knickers. It wasn't my poor sister's fault. She tried her best with both of you, but you're your father's daughters, all right. I'd rein it in now if I were you. I really think you were a disappointment here, you know. Now, hold on, oh, God damn it. Daddy, you will not dignify that with a response. And I, I just cannot believe it. Listen, Mary, no matter what you've done, you're still my sister. I'll stand by you. I haven't done anything, Sarah. Exactly, though. Everybody knows you didn't mean to kill the old boot. God rest her soul. I didn't kill her. You know what I mean, not kill... Hex. I didn't hex her either, Da. It was just a very tragic... My mother. She had the gift too, you know. By God, that woman could make her enemies drop like flags. So how's the Wicked Witch of the Northwest? Who put 50p in the Egypt? God, how am I going to go to this week? It'll be grand, love. But listen, see if things do get heated. Try not to raise to it. The last thing we want is another dead body on our hands here. I'll do my best, Da. So good of you to come. Oh, this is a big turnout. Well, Mammy was just so well liked. Right. Really? I suppose because she was the life and soul, wasn't she? Full of the joys. Always laughing. We're talking about Brady here, aren't we? Yes, Dad. No, Mary, no. I, I was just going to say that my poor mother, God bless her and keep her. Oh, man. It is not that difficult, folks! Listen, hear you. Yes, Joe. I just want to say... <laughs> <laughs> I think you're doing a fine job. Keep up the good work. All right, Ian, we get the idea, like. <laughs> you fit or not? Uh, the picture's just gone a bit sort of... Dear Jesus! You have to give it a bit of a shock now and again. You have to keep it on his toes. I'm not sure you do have to keep it on his toes, Joe. It's a television. <laughs> OK, OK, OK! I'm just going to turn it off and turn it on again. That usually does the trick. There we go. Hmm? Doesn't seem to be anything happening now. This stupid prick's broken the TV, Mary! 
For God's sake, Jerry! He's been footering. Excuse me, you're the one that was thumping us repeatedly, Joe. I'll thump you repeatedly. Well, the pair of you better sort it out. London's burning's on in 20 minutes. God, Mary, but them poor fellas flat out with fire, so they are. Jesus, but they never get a minute. Aye, it's a good job to keep themselves in such great shape. Don't marry a Greek fella. He could throw me over his shoulder any day of the week. Time's oh. your date arriving at all, love. She's already here. He has granted to the prom. Well, everyone kept saying you have to ask a fella you really like, and he's the fella I like the most. Look, oh, all I love. You're looking well, Joe. There's no doubt, shade you talk, Jerry. Should we head? John Paul's picking me up at seven. You go on. We'll see you there. Mm. Jesus, this Joe? You're looking well. Aye, I know. Why isn't anyone dancing? How are you supposed to dance this old shit? Come on, Orla. Pull your shoulder. I'd better tell Jim across the road. Chris, I'm not know what's in. Right. Firstly, we need to clear this table. Jim's bringing his equipment over. What equipment? Them old radio transmitters he collects. Him and Dad, I think they can tap into the CIA system on them. Excuse me? Jim really buzzes off radio contact. Can I tap the CIA, Joe? It'll make tracking Clinton down much easier. Right. I don't think the CIA enjoy people tracking the president, and I think they can get funny about that type of stuff. Well, let them try and bloody stop me. They will stop you, Joe. That the CIA. I won't miss my chance. Not again. You hear me, boy? What the hell is he planning to do? When JFK came to Dublin, Uncle Colin met him. Daddy didn't. This is going to be different this time, I tell you. JFK spoke to Colin. Christ, that man didn't have much luck. <laughs> What exactly is the plan over there? They're trying to discover the location of the presidential base camp. Does that mean which hotel he's staying in? I think so. Uh, is there something we can do for you, Colin? Oh, I just called around to help with this CIA business. Who told you about that? <clears throat> I did, Joe. Why? Look, Colin's met JFK. He has experience with presidents. He'll know what to do. No chance! I'm sorry, Colin, but you can't be part of this. If you meet Bill Clinton, you'll be a president up. You'll have two presidents in my one. I can't have you getting ahead of me president ways. One of his presidents is dead, Daddy. Well, it still counts. Shh. I only have to even things up again. Shh, Joe. I can't spend the rest of my life traipsing about after bloody presidents. I've all the things to be at, girl. Shut up, Joe. What the place is wrong with you? Mouse. I think I've got something. Don't toy with me now, Jim. Aye. It was a CIA agent, all right. He said they're taking Bill back to base. And I know where it is. Well, we need to move quickly. Do you still OK to drive us? What? We need someone to stay in the car in case things don't go to plan. So, a getaway driver, essentially. We're talking worst-case scenario. We're talking no-case scenario. Just doesn't make any sense, Jim. I heard him say that. As clear as dead was. Bert. Why would they bring him to Bert? Well, that's what's so clever about it. Nobody's going to go looking for the president of the USA in Bert now, are they? <laughs> sure, if you went about saying Bill Clinton was in Bert, people would think you were clean mad. Precisely. Look, lads, if you want my opinion... You I'm... don't! And? This Clinton bio is actually America's 42nd president, which is interesting now, because GFK, well, he was the 35th. Why is that interesting? Well, it's not really, I suppose. Sometimes I'll just say someone to get me from one sentence to the other, Joe. You know how it is. Is he just up here on the left? I'm not sure what number Nixon was now. Or your man, what you call him, the beardy fella in the hat. The one that knocked the out of slavery on the head. Lincoln. We're back in the same place. And Kennedy, of course, the poor crater. How? Lovely fella. Hands on him like shovels. How the feck are we back in the same feckin' place? What's going on? I've driven 178 miles and I'm back where I was five feckin' hours ago, Joe. That's what's going on. You stupid bloody idiot. 
Don Reagan character. He was another. Stop listing presidents, Callum. He lists presidents if he wants to list presidents. Ah, oh, there it is. Russ Corner Road. That's it. That's what they said. Well spotted, Jim. Good man yourself, Jim. So where would we be without you, Jim? But I would want five hundred. You in there? No sign of life, Joe. What are you at? So they told you to stay in the car. Would it be worth maybe checking next door, Jim? Right. So the Clintons are staying in a taxi rank in the arsehole of nowhere, is the thinking now, is it? It is, Jerry, aye. Fantastic. Didn't they say that I would be gone for stay? Excuse me, son. Where to? We were just wondering, have you seen the Clintons knocking about around here? The Clintons? We have reason to believe they're staying in this vicinity. What would the Clintons be doing in Burt? In the chapel, Bill. Aye. Anyone free to pick up Bill from base? Over. Anyone near base at all? Over. Oh, I Five minutes, Bill. Good. Now, Jim. Would you be open to the following possibility at all? That it may not have been a CIA agent you were picking up on that transmitter of yours. That there is, in fact, a good chance it was a taxi dispatcher from Burt ordering a car here to bring Bill to Mass. Well, you did have a strong Donegal accent, now that you mention it. <sighs> Jesus, Jim. as one of the worst atrocities of the Northern Irish conflict. At least 12 people are thought to be dead and many more wounded. Emergency services are urging anyone with medical training to come to the scene immediately. The device was detonated at 3pm this afternoon. The RUC said no warning was given.